Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you 10 settings that you absolutely need to change if you're a new iPhone user. And if you're a seasoned iPhone user, then you should probably follow this video because there's a lot you can learn from it. And there's definitely settings that you haven't changed that you need to go and change right now. So let's do this. All right, let's start with the basics. The first thing that everyone knows on their iPhone is how to access the control center. If you don't know this, you have to swipe down from the top right hand side and you get access to these various controls that can actually be customized. This is something that Apple has across the board. It's available on the iPhones, on the iPads, on the MacBook, and even on older devices such as the iPod Touch. Now, the control center is basically a system of controls that are easily accessible for any person using these devices, which gets you run through a bunch of different tasks and lets you use your iPhone to the best of its ability. Now, when you buy a brand new iPhone, your control center is going to be set up for you by Apple. And these are default settings. They're pretty basic in my opinion. You may want to go into your settings, go into control center. And when you're there, when you swipe to the bottom, you can see there's a bunch of different controls that you can add to your control center, getting it a bit more customized. This is really, really useful. And you can pretty much go into the list and pick what you want. A couple of settings that I never go without are basically Shazam, the screen recorder, as well as the ability to change from light mode to dark mode by just hitting a toggle switch. This makes it so much easier for me to get things done on my iPhone. And customizing your control center is definitely somewhere you want to start. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the app Apple logo at the back of your iPhone is not just there to look pretty. It can actually be used as a button. And this function is called back tap. Yeah, you heard me correctly. You can simply double tap or triple tap on the Apple logo at the back of your iPhone and you can get various functions. It's super easy to do this. Now you may have missed this out because it's buried deep in the menu systems of your iPhone. And in order to turn it on, you have to go into your settings, go into accessibility, touch and hit back tap. Over here, you have the ability to customize a double tap for any function that you like. And you have the ability to customize your triple tap for absolutely any function that you like. I use double tap to trigger the camera and I use triple tap to start spotlight search. And for those of you who want to see this in action, here's your double tap to trigger my camera. And next you're going to see the triple tap to trigger spotlight search. It's pretty damn cool. The next setting is for every camera enthusiast. If you just got an iPhone and you want to set up your cameras, there's a special feature known as photographic styles. You want to go into your settings on your camera app and tap on the toggle that I'm tapping right now. Photographic styles can be adjusted on any iPhone after the iPhone 13 onwards, and it basically gives you the ability to customize the style that you want to shoot in. You can shoot between rich contrast, standard, vivid, vibrant, and a bunch of different styles. Now these are different to filters because filters are basically put on top of a photograph after a photograph has been taken and processed. Photographic style basically adjusts the way your phone will process images and give all the photographs that come out of your phone's camera app a particular look. You can pretty much use the photographic styles that Apple has created for you, or you can even go ahead and adjust them any way you like. I prefer rich contrast, so I just leave it at that, but you can adjust the warmth, the tone, and the color science of this. It's a pretty cool feature in my opinion, and if you're somebody who doesn't want to shoot raw, you enjoy shooting JPEG, photographic styles is definitely something you want to check out. Like you just saw, the next thing you want to do is turn on the haptic motors or the vibration motors on your iPhone for your keyboard. I know Android users have had this for a while, but unfortunately, Apple just gave it to us. The good part is it's here now. You want to go into your settings, go into sounds and haptics, go into keyboard feedback and turn on haptic. Haptic essentially makes the vibration motor turn on every time you're typing on the iPhone. And trust me, typing has never felt this good. Now, over the last few years, in order to see your battery percentage, you had to swipe down to your control center, and it's only then that you would actually be able to see how much percentage of battery you have remaining. Fortunately, with the latest iOS updates, Apple has changed this, and you can now see your battery percentage on your home screen at all times. You've got to go into your settings, go into battery, and turn on battery percentage. This essentially gives you the ability to see the percentage of your battery within the battery icon on the top right-hand side of your screen at all times. And you don't need to swipe down just to see something so simple. It's really sad that we didn't have it for the longest time, but I'm really glad this setting is back now. So don't forget to turn this back on in your settings. Now, if you've got a new iPhone, one of the best features of iOS 16 is the fact that you can actually customize your home screens. This is something you could never do on an iPhone. You pretty much had the same home screen and the same lock screen for the longest time ever, other than changing a wallpaper. But now, with iOS 16, you have the ability to customize your home screens by just unlocking your phone and long pressing on it, which gives you the ability to create new home screens, as well as customize the number of widget that you want on your home screen at all times, as well as be able to put in whatever wallpaper that you want. Also, you can set each home screen to a custom focus mode, which 
I'm going to make a tutorial on later if you don't know how to do. But this is truly amazing. If you got a new iPhone, definitely experiment with the different fonts, experiment with the different wallpapers, experiment with the different widgets and the different apps that you want on your home screen. And you can get your phone to look pretty nice and pretty unique in its own way. So definitely, definitely check this out because this is something that I've spent a ton of time doing so that I can make my phone feel fresh for days to come. So the next feature is essentially for all you iPhone creators out there. We're talking about the True Tone Display, which is a special feature that's been on all Apple devices for a minute now. True Tone Display is basically a technology that allows your iPhone to adjust the display brightness based on the ambient light in the room, basically making your display slightly warmer or slightly cooler depending on what time of day you're at or where you're at at any particular point in time. You have ambient light sensors on the iPhone pretty much fixed into the device, and these can basically help the iPhone understand how to adjust the display to avoid blue light glare. This is really, really good for your eyes in a lot of ways, but why I would talk tell you guys to switch it off is if you're anyone who likes to edit their photos and videos on your iPhone. There are a lot of mobile creators out there and if you're one of them, you want to go into your control center and turn off True Tone Display. As you can see as I toggle it on and off, it makes a difference to the way your display feels. You can also control the True Tone Display from the Display and Brightness settings within your Settings app. But according to me, the fastest way to control it is just via the control center. True Tone Display and Night Shift will definitely change the color temperature of your iPhone screen, making it look a little too yellow or a little too blue. And that's definitely going to affect you when you're trying to edit your photos and you're trying to get a look or a color fixed into them iPhones are all about privacy and in this modern world where we're using apps all the time and we're pretty much on the internet 365 days a year, 24-7, privacy is something that's extremely important. The iPhone gives you the ability to ask apps not to track you, which is something that has been game-changing for iOS users. A lot of times we just allow once or we leave it on and this can be really harmful to your privacy. Fortunately, there's a bunch of settings built into your iPhone which will let you change this later on. So let's go check those out. All you gotta do is go into your settings, go into privacy and security, hit your location services and you'll see a list of all all the apps and what their status is with respect to tracking you and your location services. Apps track your location services isn't the smartest thing to do, at least not on a privacy front for yourself. So a lot of times when you're busy and you download or install an app and you allow an app to track you, don't worry about it. You can just go back into your settings and change your preferences at any given point in time. This really, really helps improve your online privacy and I definitely suggest that you guys go in and see which apps you actually want tracking you and which you don't. The next tip has to do with your storage on your iPhone, which has always been a sore spot for any iPhone user, considering we know how much Apple charges for getting higher storage variants when you're buying any device for them. So if you're somebody who has a 128 GB or a 256 GB storage module of an iPhone, and you go in and check your storage and see it's practically full, you will notice that your photographs take up majority of the space on your phone. What you essentially want to do is go into your settings, go down all the way down to the Photos app within your settings, and once you're there, you want to click on Optimize iPhone Storage. This is really important because essentially what it's going to do is it's going to optimize your iPhone storage by uploading all of your photographs to iCloud. This is essentially going to leave you with a tiny small size preview of all the photographs that you originally had on your iPhone with the originals completely backed up to your iCloud with complete and full quality. And whenever you want to access those photographs, you just tap on them, your phone's going to download those photographs from iCloud and you can use those photographs at any given point in time. This really helps with the optimization of your storage and you're going to see it's going to free up a ton of space for you. The next tip applies only to iPhone 14 users with the new dynamic island you have live activities which basically means every time you minimize an app which is compatible with the dynamic island you're going to see a live activity on top of the dynamic island showing you exactly that the app is running in the background. This is really useful as it gives you quick access to your apps but when you're running multiple different apps at one time for example a timer as well as music swiping across the dynamic island helps you hide your live activity. This is also good on a privacy front and it's something that a lot of people don't know they can do and they just leave a bunch of apps in the dynamic island dancing around at all times. So if if you're somebody who doesn't like the live activities feature, you can literally swipe over your dynamic island with your hand and you're going to see the live activity is actually just going to disappear. If you have multiple live activities, you can even swipe over them to merge them together. And this has been super useful for me, only showing me the activity that I actually want to see at any given point in time. Also, dynamic island is pretty cool. I'm going to make a full blown video on it in the near future. So I hope you're excited. Here we go. We have the timer on the screen. And as you can see, it's fully visible as a live activity. I can long press it. I can toggle it. I can switch it on and off. I can do whatever I want and swiping over it will help me stop the activity completely. Okay, that's it from today's tips and tricks. I hope you learned something today and I hope you use these settings. If you do, definitely let me know in the comments section which ones you have had to change after watching this video and let me know how you like this video as well by giving this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel out. If you have any friends who are new Apple users, definitely share this video with them too because this is going to be super helpful for all of them. And if you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing because it's really, really useful for me. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm and I can keep making such tech videos, tips and tricks, as well as street photography vlogs for you 
you guys on this channel. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.